Okay, so various stages of spiritual, spiritually uh, developing. Well, I'd say that um, spiritual development goes through many, many different stages. Um, I was uh, I was in active addiction. I used to work in the stock market. I had a huge ego, multiple addictions. Uh, how did that feel? Well, no spirituality felt like I was very strongly in the body. And uh, there was lots of intense negative emotions and addiction, addictive emotions. So there's like intense fear, uh, intense judgment of others and fear of judgment of others. Uh, in, in, uh, addiction, which is, you know, um, very similar to obsessive compulsive. Like when I, I just need to make sure I have enough uh, jam donuts and supply uh, and and that is my drug, or I need to be close to my drugs or have a huge supply of drugs, uh, which was uh, one of them being sugar uh, and sugary foods. So, um, uh, so there was extreme, you know, this extreme up and down, this extreme like uh, uh, fear and terror and then relief if I was acting out by eating uh, chocolates or working hard or getting an adrenaline fix with power money prestige and other addictions so that kind of roller coaster of feeling really negative because the ego blocks off god's luminescence and but then when the ego acts out on addiction it gets temporary relief so it then goes into bondage it needs more donuts or it needs more validation or it needs more money whatever the drug is that it's trying to get a a short-term relief from so um, that's the first stage. Then usually one gets into extreme pain that having no spirituality is not really working. So usually at that point, um, uh, it could be the dark night of the soul at that point or later on, one feels like one wants to embrace spirituality and one takes on board various books, teachers, authors, or whatever happens that makes gives the, gives willingness which is not really what the ego wants to do, to be willing to do spiritual work. I mean, it would rather do lots of other things. It's not It's not in the ego's best interest to do spiritual work because spiritual work is dissolving the ego. It's going the opposite direction. You know, the ego often doesn't really rec recognize that properly in the beginning. So um, now, depending on how far down you've been, uh, spiritual work, um, how would I say? It's like... Um, well, I'll just say it in, in twelve step in the twelve step form. Mm. At a certain point, if you don't choose spiritual work, life is going to get worse. It's like you've had the calling, and uh, you can't like uh, like if you're in Alcoholics Anonymous, if you stop drinking and start working a spiritual program and decide you're going to start drinking again, you're going to feel awful to to go back now that you know that that's blocking you off from. Uh, from uh, light, enlightening yourself, enlightening yourself from the burden of the darkness of drinking and the negative thoughts that go with it. So, you know, um, so it is spiritual work. Um, now, quite often, um, you'll hear from spiritual seekers. I mean, I help people uh, with various addiction, addictive problems, working in spiritual work. They usually complain that things are not happening fast enough and that it's not working fast enough like, uh, you know, I'm in addiction, and then three weeks later, you're telling them to pray, to go to 12-step groups. And they do that, and they go, well, I've been doing it for three weeks. Why am I not happy, joyous, and free yet? You know, uh, surely, surely it should be within a week, and then everything should be gone, and I should be in bliss forever, and it should be really easy. And then I, so, I sort of tell them, like... Um, uh, how long have you been doing the program? And I share my experience, which isn't always there. Like sometimes to get over addictions is a couple of years. Now, as you get to more advanced levels um, of spiritual work, um, the problem becomes slightly different is that there's not many people and not many groups that are at advanced levels. So you, um, the problem with that, which can be overcome, is that um, if you haven't got the groups, you need to be immersing yourself in the things that will dissolve it. So if one is feeling like one is trying to let go of the addiction uh, to thoughts, uh, 
there's not so much support uh, as with other things at lower levels of spirituality. So like if you wanted to go to a forgiveness workshop, there's probably, you know, a thousand in London. Uh, but if you wanted to go um, and uh, to a group on an enlightenment or meet someone like Buddha, uh, you, you know, it's going to be very, very hard and there's any groups or people in the world are going to be few and far between. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, unless you immerse yourself in the vibration of the groups, the teachers or the books or the tapes all the time, uh, you tend to get programmed by the, the, the world, by the news, the media, the TV, even by speaking to people who are at lower vibrations, you tend to believe that, you know, if they say I'm a body and I've got a pain in my foot. And you're trying to have a conversation with them you eventually believe that you're a body and you probably have pains in your foot rather than uh the whole week you're meeting people telling you you're not the body you're not your thoughts and it's all not real and you are that which is infinite and forever so you're not in that world so the world tends to pull you into these illusions and you don't have um but th there are ways around it as i shared uh, go to the groups connect to people who are at that vibration uh, and otherwise, you know, I recommend uh, Dr. David R. Hawkins uh, or, um, you know, you can find out, um, you can read Ramana Maharishi or other teachers, Ramana Maharishi um, or, or Hawkins. Yeah, I recommend that, those two. So, you know, the thing of like wanting to give up uh, because you've been trying to get a leap in your spiritual awareness and you feel dragged out well sometimes there are obstacles which take a lot of work and actually the ego hides the core you have what's called blind spots so you're like making progress and you're making progress and then um, suddenly it seems like you're working very hard and you can't make any progress and it may be going on for a long time um that sometimes is usually due to a couple of things. It could be there's a blind spot. Uh, for example, a blind spot could be like if you're trying to let go of the addiction to thoughts, mm, it can be that um, something refuses, you know, the the think the thinker wants to let go of thoughts while thinking about it. You, you, I mean, you just it's just not possible. It has to be a leap in consciousness. You can't let go of thinking by thinking about it, you see. And so... And if you try harder to think about it and learn about it and understand it, that still won't work. So uh, one can get frustrated or feel like giving up. Um, however, you know, um, I would suggest um, the thing I would say is mm, uh, it's good not to give up because sometimes you're closer than you think. And sometimes in just pers persevering, the answer will come. And when you stop persevering, the answer won't come so easily. So it's a bit like, um, I would say, it's a bit like banging on, on God's door. If it's like, like, I go to a group where everyone's blissed out and not in their thoughts. And uh, I'm still in my head. I'm trying really hard to get out of my head. Well, I think it's good to go to the, speak to those people and go to those groups and just share that you're not getting it because they probably have, you know, they might, somebody in the group or somebody might say something that will help you make the shift. You know, uh, you can't, um, uh, whereas if you, you you stay around people who haven't made the shift because, and you sort of give up, it's, you know, the answer still may come, but it's less likely, you know, um, that you're going to meet Buddha in a pub or in a buffet restaurant, you know, it's more likely you'll meet, meet Buddha in a, in a spiritual group and get the insights you need. So the thing with that is like, just like in the uh, AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, if you're, if you hang around people who've stopped drinking alcohol and just be around them uh, uh, long enough, usually you'll get it at some point. Whereas if you just carry on with your friends that are, that are drinking every day, there's less of a chance to get it because the energy, the vibration of those places has the answer. And sometimes the answer is not even verbal. You know, you just need to be in the energy of those groups and then the answer and then the insight arises be at a higher level than thought. Sometimes there's perseverance. Also, not to compare yourself with others, 
um, if others like, I mean, if uh, if you compare yourself to others, you, I mean, you can't see the level of trauma, the level of thoughts, um, the level of uh, the baggage that's hidden within the ego, within your ego compared to other egos. And if you just look at somebody else, I mean, you don't know how much work they put in in this lifetime and other lifetimes. Maybe they've been been working at their ego intensely for 10 lifetimes, and you've only been doing it for four lifetimes, this one and a few others. So that they'd be, you can't really, if you compare yourself, your ego will make you feel negative. So just because someone else might be blissed out and you're having a hard time, it's best not to, um, it's best to let that go. Uh, and uh, the dark night of the, yeah, the other thing I would say is what I've learned a lot is um, spiritual growth actually usually some of the, yeah, I would say this, the most intense spiritual growth is when one is willing to, in my experience, is when I was willing to face the most intense uh, pain and not back down. You know, and that I think is the dark night of the soul, the test of the dark night of the soul. It's like there's terror, there's fear, there's fear of death, there's horrific pain. And it's like, let's do something to escape this using ego methods. Uh, it could be eating a donut, a glass of alcohol. Yeah, it could be um, whatever it is. So, um, and if you use the ego's mechanisms to get rid of the pain, then uh, the ego wins basically you don't you don't pass the test which is fine you can you get, get to, you get another chance at some point in the future to try again but, but what i found is when i didn't back down when there was horrific pain or fear of death or panic attacks or whatever it was and and was willing to bear it and to see whether uh and to, and to trust those who've spiritually gone through uh because you know uh uh, uh to the other side and have and have found the sunlight of the spirit have gone into the illuminated states and and you know like the course because says um there's nothing to fear uh, so if you go through the fear you find out the other side there was nothing to fear because and you find the truth that that awaits but if you back down then you lose it so i would say um in terms of uh giving up or going down i mean that's fine but um Usually, spiritual progress is uh, tough, uh, meaning that if it was easy, uh, you probably wouldn't do it. So, um, uh, but you know, it's it's okay. It's okay. I mean, if one is, um, I've always taken. You know, the, the one thing that really helped me was Dr. Hawkins' map of consciousness, and like, okay, uh, if everything that Buddha said was at the highest level of enlightenment. And, and Mother Teresa was pretty high up there as well in Gandhi. Um, uh, Ramana Maharishi, all pretty high teachers. So if I just read their books or watch their videos, you know, um, it's going to it's going to it's going to be difficult, but it's going to tune me in to the highest levels of wisdom. Now, if I decide that's too high for me, I don't want I don't I can't I can't resonate. That's fine as well. But then, you know, if I decide to, I don't know, who's my my local, uh, 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 just my local, I don't know, someone who's not so spiritually high, if I listen to them and hear them, then, you know, th that will help me to some extent. But it's going to be slower because I can, I won't be able, you know, it's unlikely I'll go to enlightenment with someone who's not enlightened or a, a group that's not enlightened. It's likely that I'll make progress towards where that person or that that teachings or that group is over time. So it's um, and when I sort of saw that, well, it's more comfortable to to go to to groups and meet people which are comfortable. But uh, I thought, well, that's a bit daft. Was I thought? I thought I want to make progress as fast as possible. So I want to go to the advanced groups, and even if I don't understand it, I just want to keep going there until I do get it. You know, uh, because um, uh, I was always impressed by Dr. Hawkins saying, you know, straight and narrow is the path, waste no time. It's like, uh, you know, if I spend, um, if I've only got like 80 years in this physical body, then um, 
if I take just take it easy in those easy spiritual groups and spend 30 years there, when I could be in more advanced groups, which are more difficult and bring up much more pro um, stuff, uh, but intuitively I wanted to make progress faster because, um, um, yeah, uh, there's also the thing of like going to advanced groups and going to other groups all at the same time. So like uh, I do, I go to 12-step meetings, which are low vibration spiritually. I read The Course of Miracles, which is a higher vibration spiritually. And I I go to um, to groups like this one, where people are at very, very advanced levels, um, you know, are at the, you know, more or less in the silence and the bliss. So one can do all three simultaneously, but I wouldn't really give up the high ones myself. Um, I know my ego would like to do that because it's uncomfortable and might bring up a lot of stuff. Um, but um, I definitely found, like, um, when I met my high teachers, like Hawkins and others, that was when I made the fastest progress. I remember, I, I just share this, I remember the first time I went to see Hawkins, uh, my, he had the most horrific headache, because my ego couldn't stand what he was saying. You know, it was like my ego was going, like, get out of here. <laughs> it's like, it was actually like my ego was being slaughtered, being in the uh, thing. But you know, I wanted to go back because my ego had almost killed me. So I thought it better that my ego get uh, beaten up by a spiritual teacher than uh, leave this, leave that high vibration uh, environment and let the ego uh, do me in. So and that was a good choice. Okay, I'll stop there.